This demonstration looks at two different techniques for achieving a twin needle jersey hem. Both techniques look the same on the outside with the twin needle finish. But on the reverse side, one technique uses an overlock on the edge of the fabric and the other technique doesn't use any overlocking. The overlocked option may be more suitable for a very lightweight fabric or for a fabric where the edge rolls back a lot. Well, this is a reasonably heavyweight jersey. You can see it's not so see-through. I can tell by the recovery that there is a fair amount of elastane or lycra in it. An important first step is to press the fabric. For the first side that I'm going to work on, I'm starting by overlocking the edge of the fabric. I have worked with the differential feed to make sure that this will not stretch the fabric. On this overlocker, I have adjusted the differential feed, which is this button here. I've written a little note here for myself to know if I turn it in this direction, it's stretching the fabric. And if I turn it in this direction, it is slightly gathering the fabric. So if your overlocker is stretching the stretch fabric too much and you're ending up with a rippled effect, then it's important to play with the differential feed until you end up with a flat result. Using the differential feed enables a nice flat overlocked finish like this. A typical hem on a stretch fabric will be anything between, for a narrow hem, maybe one centimetre and for a deeper hem up to two centimetres. Two will be slightly easier to sew, so I'm going to turn this one up at two centimetres. Pinning the hem allowance on the outside of the garment makes it easier to press the hem up. So this is the hem pinned on the outside of the proposed garment. So now turning the fabric over, press the hem allowance, removing the pins as you go. If you're sampling up a hem for a garment and you're doing a sample to see how the settings on your machines work, don't be tempted to sample up a short piece because what will happen then is stretch can be happening and you don't notice it on the shorter piece. It's much better to sample up a wide piece and then it's much easier to see if something is going wrong. Okay, and now I'm going to place some pins just to hold it together. I need to plan now carefully where to do the line of twin needle stitching. I need to aim for the twin needles of sewing to stitch not over into the single layer here because then they won't be doing any good and the machine will get a bit confused but I want to stitch just below the edge here and then down to wherever the second needle will be. I'm working with a Schmetz twin needle which has a four millimeter gap between the two needles. This one is suitable for stretch fabric. So I've got the turn up here is about two centimeters so if I aim to twin needle with the center of the twin needle at one and a half one needle will end up here on the right hand side of one and a half which is just about the perfect place for it to end up and the other needle will end up on this side okay so in order to work with a twin needle I'm going to show you how to work with the two spools of thread so I've got one spool of black here and I'm going to work with the black thread in an anti-clockwise direction on the spool on the left and then for the spool on the right I'm going to work with the thread in a clockwise direction. But as I'm sewing, the two don't make full contact with each other because this one has the thread coming from the right and this one has the thread coming from the left or coming from behind. So they can unspool without causing too much friction. Okay, so I'm going to thread the thread on the left, the one that I would normally work with first. So threading the thread through the back here, down and through the tensioner here at the bottom back up and through this tensioner. I then need to thread through the bar and then through the tensioner on the left. So back up then for the second spool. So it's important at this point with the second spool to unspool as much thread as I'm going to need to thread the whole machine because if I simply start pulling here and then start pulling through I will disrupt the first thread that I've already threaded. So I'm pulling off about a half a meter of thread and now I follow the exact same threading. The threader at the back and I'm just taking care not to disrupt that first thread through here through this one 
and then when I thread through the bar, I want it to be clear which one of these is the thread for the right hand side of the needle and which one is the thread for the left hand of the needle. So I'll just leave them in separate directions. So the needle that I'm going to work with is a Schmetz and um, Schmetz are really, really great quality needles. And this one here is a stretch twin needle and the numbers explain to you about how they work. This one is a 4.0, which means it's a four millimeter um, distance between the two needles and 75 is the thickness of the needle. We're threading the left thread through the left needle and then threading the right thread through the right needle. Okay, so I'm now ready to stitch the hem. So I've just lowered the foot down, okay? So this second line here is the 1.5. So, okay, so the main thing I need to watch out for as I go is that the fabric doesn't start to move slower on top than underneath. The only thing I'm watching now at the moment is that the edge of the fabric here is lining up with the line so that I'm doing a straight line. The fabric is trying very hard because we have dog teeth in underneath here. The dog teeth are feeding the bottom layer quite quickly through and the front is having a slight problem trying to keep up. So I'm just stretching the fabric out ever so slightly to try and help the two keep up with each other. And I'm placing all of my fingers of my left hand here to keep a little bit of feed going with the fabric. I also find when the top is moving more slowly than the layer underneath, curving the fabric up like this will encourage more of the top layer to feed through. So this is the end result and um, because I pulled it out a little bit to prevent the layers from separating out it has puckered a little bit but I should be able to shrink that down at this point by pressing down onto the fabric with a little bit of steam and just to give you a little look at the back so what's happening and it's kind of handy that I've worked with black thread here what's happening with the twin needle is we've got the two pieces of thread on this side of the fabric and underneath we only have the one bobbin thread so the bobbin thread is having to zigzag across to connect up with the two top pieces of thread I'm just going to give this a light press down and shrink any of this excess make sure to press directly down onto the fabric rather than sliding the iron from right to left so I can now see the width at the top of the piece here that I haven't sewn is the exact same width still as the piece that I've just stitched. And then most importantly, if you have worked with a jersey garment, so we're typically talking t-shirts here, it's very important that you can still stretch this to put it on. So that's a very important test is, does your fabric still stretch adequately to put on over the head? The second technique uses the twin needle stitch without previously overlocking the edge of the fabric. So I've just pinned up a two centimeter hem allowance on the other side of the sample here and I'm just going to stitch the exact same hem but without any overlocking underneath. So lining up the fabric then, again the same story, I'm going to line it up with the 1.5 mark here. Use all the same strategies as for the other side to prevent the fabric from stretching or separating. This is the end result of the side where we had no overlocking on the edge of the fabric. There is still a slight bubbly finish and I'm happy that I can still shrink this out with the steam of an iron. Pat the iron down gently over the excess bubbles. So it does seem ever so slightly flatter here than on the other side because there is always a slight raised effect when you work with a twin needle. So looking across the fabric, there's always a slight little hint of a bubble and on the other side here, it just looks a little bit more raised here. And to look at the other side, so it looks quite similar on the inside. This feels quite secure because of the overlocking and this one just feels a little bit less chunky. So if I had to give a preference, I actually think I prefer 
the end result of the side that has no overlocking on it. I'm just curious to know about the recovery of both sides. So I'm going to stretch it as if it's just gone over a head and back in again. Okay, so the end result is preferable on this side without the overlocking. Um, it has slightly less recovery on the other side. And another thing I noted is it actually has more stretch. I could stretch it a good bit further on the side that has no overlock on it. I mean, it's marginal, but small. But when I let it go, there is definitely a lot more pucker on this side and a lot less pucker on this side here. So having just sampled both techniques, I would choose the no overlocking version each time but keep in mind the overlocked version may work better for very lightweight fabrics or fabrics where the edges roll a lot.